Never a dull moment in the NFL. Hello and welcome into First Take. Appreciate you starting your week here with us alongside Skip Bayless and Stephen A. Smith. Hey, hey, I'm hey. Karen. Good morning, What's gentlemen. Up, Condolences about your your lost quarterback. Condolences about your Cowboys. Well, I know we both lost our quarterbacks. Mm. Right? We lost our quarterbacks, but somehow, some way, I feel good today. Yeah. I feel good today. I don't know what it is. Uh, mm. uh. I think the Steelers won. Mm. The Cowboys lost. Oh, okay. makes me feel good. Mm. Oh, we'll get into I'm that. I still have my quarterback. I'm just saying. All right, coming up, we're recapping all the major NFL storylines from Sunday. We'll hear from the guys on what they alluded to. The Cowboys taking the first L of the season at the hands of the undefeated Falcons. How about that? Plus, Cam Newton and the Panthers also have a perfect rep record. Excuse me, but not everything was smooth sailing Sunday. Wait till you hear what Ed Hockley, the referee, said to Cam yesterday. We'll react to that. But first, the Eagles got their first win of the season on the road in New Jersey. Defeating the Jets 24-17, Darren Sproles returned upon 89 yards for a score. Ryan Matthews rushed for over 100 yards while starting in place of the injured DeMarco Murray. The Eagles improved to 10-0 all-time against the Jets, who are coming off a victory at Indianapolis last Monday night. Philly aided by three Ryan Fitzpatrick interceptions. Stephen A., does this game prove that your Philadelphia Eagles have figured things out? Absolutely not. It does not prove that, Skip Bayless. Let me be the first to say that. The fact of the matter is, is that the Philadelphia Eagles showed up at MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey, yesterday against a team who seemed ill-equipped to go up against them. The New York Jets offensively, defensively, all around looked confused. They looked lost. They looked pathetic. And by the way, I might add, um, it just irritated not just Jet fans, but anyone who looks at the Jets and continuously finds themselves in the position that whenever you sit up there and say the Jets have arrived, that somehow, some way the Jets are okay, something else happens. Now you can sit up there with that face of yours, all right? Mm -hmm. Sitting there going like this. Well, you know what? I'm not caught up in it e either. I told you that the Eagles weren't going to do anything in the NFC East. I told you not to get all, uh, all caught up in there. Oh, so what, all right? I don't feel like sitting there and giving you kudos for that because we'll get to your Cowboys soon enough. But I will say this to you. The Philadelphia Eagles showed me absolutely nothing, not just because they went scoreless in the second half, but in the first half, that Jets team just seemed ill-prepared. Now, I am a fan of Todd Bowles. We all know this, and I think that he's going to be a sensational coach. But I did say in that first half yesterday, he didn't have them ready. Their offense, first of all, don't even get me started with Ryan Fitzpatrick. I, I just can't believe uh, if, 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 if I don't want you to faint when I say this, Skip, but there are actually people who call into my radio show mm -hmm. every day that are actual fans of Ryan Fitzpatrick. Patrick. Why? I have no idea whatsoever. It seems to me like the IQ from your Harvard education doesn't necessarily translate nope. into you performing big time on a football field on an NFL Sunday. Mm -hmm. Brandon Marshall know what the hell he was thinking about with mm -hmm. maybe one of the stupidest turnovers that I've ever seen. But, you know, we understand that he was willing to admit that and yep. we'll let that go. Yep. Only had 23 yards rushing. We know that with Ryan Fitzpatrick as your yep. quarterback, you're going to have to run the football effectively. You weren't able to do that. We transition to the Philadelphia Eagles. We talk about DeMarco Murray, y'all. The absence of DeMarco Murray actually had the Eagles looking better. You said it. I will give you props for this with a smile on my face. Mm -hmm. You are absolutely right when you said Ryan Matthews may be better for the system yes. than DeMarco Murray. Yep. But let me tell you something. Neither of them is better for the system than Darren Sproles. I mean, when you see what he did with the 89-yard punt return, mm -hmm. with the one-yard run, where, I mean, it, he was absolutely sensational yesterday. There's no question. And he came into the game, by the way. For as the Eagles leading Russia, he had 46 yards rushing on the season in his first two games. And then he was actually their leading Russia because we all know that DeMarco Murray had 11 yards and 21 carries. Mm -hmm. and, and Ryan Matthews only had four attempts for crying out loud. But he showed up yesterday with 108 yards rushing. Mm -hmm. The Eagles came out. Surprised everybody. Switched things up a little bit. Obviously, their blocking was exceptional. Sam Bradford, even though he wasn't that impressive to me, did throw a couple of impressive passes. The defense overall for the New York Jets seemed ill-prepared. But to answer the question directly, do I believe that this is that some some, some epiphany has, has 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 hit us, or in my case, has returned, and that the Philadelphia Eagles have shown that indeed that the first two games were an aberration and that things are going to look bright for them mm -hmm. going forward in the NFC East, yep. my answer would be no. Primarily because, once again, they won two additional quarters 
without scoring mm -hmm. a single point. So they alone, they had went scoreless in mm -hmm. five quarters of the first two games out of the eight. Now they've gone scoreless in seven quarters out of 11. Mm -hmm. I mean, out of 12. I, I want to compliment you to start this show and, and appreciate the fact that for once, for the first time in a long, long time, you did not overreact to what you saw yesterday and leap with both feet back aboard the Eagles bandwagon. That is impressive perspective on your part because I did warn you on Friday, I thought the Jets were gonna blow this game. Molly actually sided with me after I went out on the limb. That's about as far out on the limb as you can get. But and what was my theory? Right. My theory was it's the theory of too good to be true. When the whole world says that one decent team has zero chance against another really good team, but the Eagles are still a decent team. I never said they weren't. I got problems with Chip Kelly, but I, they got talent on that team. They have talent. Every time I've seen that happen in my career, invariably, the underdog pulls off the shocking upset. You know why? Because the Jets read the papers, they listen to the radio, they watch television. All they heard all week long was that visiting team coming into your building has no chance in this game. And that's exactly how the Jets played yesterday. They came out flat, emotionally, psychologically flat. There was no urgency. There was no killer instinct from the start. They were back on their heels. And you finally looked up and it was 24 to nothing. Chip Kelly, are you kidding me? Okay, now what good did we take away from it? Well, none at the quarterback because what, what you said was going to happen to Sam Bradford did happen to Sam. He was pathetic to me, generally pathetic. His QBR was 26, again, on a scale of 0 to 100. It's hard for me to say that, though, okay. so many drop passes okay. I saw the but, Eagles but you know what? yesterday. But they, listen, th this was not impressive. To what, what was he total in this game? It, it's, it's just to, he was for him 14, to 14 to 28, 28 for 118. That's, yep. that's not... That's not big time, take it to the bank kind of numbers. That's mm -hmm. not going to change the balance of power in the NFC East. Mm -hmm. I will give you Ryan Matthews. He's quicker out of his cuts than DeMarco is. So he's a little better fit. And for him to get 108 yards rushing, that is impressive. I will give you that. I thought their defense came to play just because they've been shamed so much that it was the reverse psychology of these guys came out like, okay, watch this. We ain't this bad. And all of a sudden, even that kid Jordan Hicks who cheap shotted Tony Romo and broke his clavicle by, but that, by attacking him, as I'm uh, quoting Jordan Hicks, he led them with nine tackles. He's pretty good, a rookie from Texas. And he's getting his shot now that Kiko's gone. On, and I thought the, the whole secondary played better. But guess who they're playing against? It's the same old Ryan Fitzpatrick. He's okay, but when you least expect it, he's going to throw it to the other team. So if you throw it to the other team three times, and then Brandon Marshall tries to make the ultimate hero play, and I, I'm not going to condemn him for it either because they're down 17 to nothing on the Brandon Marshall play, and it was the equivalent of the basketball player going into the lane and going up to make a, a pass or a shot and then having nowhere to go. He thought he had it to throw it back to somebody to make some sensational play, and there was nobody to throw it to except the wrong team. So you turn it over four times. Darren Sproles, you allow to get loose and take it all the way to the house on a punt return, which is like a turnover to me. It's like a touchdown turnover. So there are five huge blunders. You're not going to be able to over overcome it even at home. Now, I think the Jets are a little overrated. I wasn't with you. You said they're a wild card team. I got Buffalo as the wild card team yep. coming out of that, that division. That is correct. That is correct. Okay. I'm still not sold. But when, obviously, if Revis is a little nicked, and Antonio Cromartie can't finish the game because he's got his knee, and Ivory can't go. If you take away those little edges at those positions, all of a sudden they're vulnerable because it, the, the game is going to come back on Ryan Fitzpatrick. He had to throw 58 passes yesterday. Well, I don't think he okay. had to, and that was one of the other okay. things, Skip. Well, I don't think he had to throw the 58 passes. Is that a Chan Gailey fact, issue? Not, not to mention, yeah, I think yeah. it is. All and right. then the other thing is, is that I think that the Jets' pass rush will be significantly upgraded once Sheldon Richardson comes back. Mm -hmm. Maybe. I uh, mean, when I made my pick, it was under those premises, and I still stand by them. Yeah. Well, big picture, uh, uh, again, will the Jets bounce back and be pretty good? They will. But I am not betting on this Philly team. I'm still not going to bet on them in the East. And it's the only positive I could, as a Cowboy mm -hmm. supporter, that I could take away from yesterday was they did win, but they didn't win impressively to me.
they, they won by default because the other team didn't show up. I totally agree with that. Right. And, I'm, and I'm of the mindset, listen, the, the, there's still a lot of work that they have to do. I guess a win could do a lot of confidence for you. But, but to me, what I'm seeing from you, you got to remember, Sam Bradford decided to, to bet on himself. He thought that he was worth more money than they were offering. He's betting on himself. I don't know how wise of a bet that appears either. to have been. But yep. that also means there is the possibility that he could be gone from the Eagles as of next season. You're Chip Kelly, not that Nick Foles is anything to brag at home about, to go home and brag about, but at the same time, you know, who's going to be your quarterback in the yep. future? Who's go what kind of players are yep. you going to be able to get? These are all the kind of things that I think we need to watch out for okay. and monitor with Chip Kelly and his Philadelphia Eagles, because I'm not sold. I'm okay. not sold based on what I'm all seeing. Right. And before we go completely gaga over what Sproles did yesterday, I'm going to remind you, he carried the ball 11 times for a total of 17 yards, and he he caught four passes for a total of 19 yards. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't within the confines of the offense he did his damage. Right. You just can't let him catch a punt and have room to run with it. Right. It's your fault. The joke's on you. That's your fault. Yeah, that's fair. Because you can kick it away that's from fair. him. You cannot let him loose. That's fair. That's fair. He sure is fun to watch those Oh, he's fun that when, when he gets so going. Losing. Oh, yeah. He's yeah, fun to sure. watch, yep. All right, so the Redskins, Eagles, and Giants are all now tied at one and two behind the Cowboys. Now Never a dull moment in the NFL. Hello and welcome into First Take. Appreciate you starting your week here with us alongside Skip Bayless and Stephen A. Smith. Hey, hey, hey. Karen. Good morning, What's gentlemen. Up, man? Condolences about your, your lost quarterback. Condolences about your Cowboys. Yeah, I know. We both lost our quarterbacks. Mm. Right? We lost our quarterbacks, but somehow, some way, I feel good today. Yeah. I feel good today. I don't know what it is. Uh, mm. uh. I think the Steelers won. Mm. The Cowboys lost. Oh. Okay. Makes me feel good. Mm. Oh, we'll get into I'm that. I still have my quarterback. I'm just saying. All right, coming up, we're recapping all the major NFL storylines from Sunday. We'll hear from the guys on what they alluded to. The Cowboys taking the first L of the season at the hands of the undefeated Falcons. How about that? Plus, Cam Newton and the Panthers also have a perfect rep record. Excuse me, but not everything was smooth sailing Sunday. Wait till you hear what Ed Hockey the referee said to Cam yesterday, we'll react to that. But first, the Eagles got their first win of the season on the road in New Jersey. Defeating the Jets 24-17, Darren Sproles returned upon 89 yards for a score. Ryan Matthews rushed for over 100 yards while starting in place of the injured DeMarco Murray. The Eagles improved to 10-0 all-time against the Jets, who are coming off a victory at Indianapolis last Monday night. Philly aided by three Ryan Fitzpatrick interceptions. Stephen A, does this game prove that your Philadelphia Eagles have figured things out? Absolutely not. It does not prove that, Skip Bayless. Let me be the first to say that. The fact of the matter is, is that the Philadelphia Eagles showed up at MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey yesterday against a team who seemed ill-equipped to go up against them. The New York Jets offensively, defensively, all around looked confused. They looked lost. They looked pathetic. And by the way, I might add, um, it just irritated not just Jet fans, but anyone who looks at the Jets and continuously finds themselves in the position that whenever you sit up there and say the Jets have arrived, that somehow, some way the Jets are okay, something else happens. Now you can sit up there with that face of yours, all right? Sitting there going like this. Well, you know what? I'm not caught up in it e either. I told you that the Eagles weren't going to do anything in the NFC East. I told you not to get all, uh, all caught up in there. Oh, so what, all right? I don't feel like sitting there and giving you kudos for that because we'll get to your Cowboys soon enough. But I will say this to you. The Philadelphia Eagles showed me absolutely nothing, not just because they went scoreless in the second half, but in the first half, that Jets team just seemed ill-prepared. Now, I am a fan of Todd Bowles. We all know this, and I think that he's going to be a sensational coach. But I did say in that first half yesterday, he didn't have them ready. The offense, first of all, don't even get me started with Ryan Fitzpatrick. I, I just can't believe. Uh, if, 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 I don't want you to faint when I say this, Skip, but there are actually people who call into my radio show mm -hmm. every day that are actual fans of Ryan Fitzpatrick. Why, I have no idea whatsoever. It seems to me like the IQ from your Harvard education doesn't necessarily translate nope. into you performing big time on a football field on an NFL Sunday. Mm -hmm. Brandon Marshall know what the hell he was thinking about with mm -hmm. maybe one of the stupidest turnovers that I've ever seen. But, you know, we understand that he was willing to admit that and yep. we'll let that go. Yep. Only had 23 yards rushing. We know that with Ryan Fitzpatrick as your yep. quarterback, you're going to have to run the football effectively. You weren't able to do that. We transitioned to the Philadelphia Eagles. We talk about DeMarco Murray, y'all. The absence of DeMarco Murray 
actually had the Eagles looking better. You said it. I will give you props for this with a smile on my face. Mm -hmm. You are absolutely right when you said Ryan Matthews may be better for the system yes. than DeMarco Murray. Yep. But let me tell you something. Neither of them is better for the system than Darren Sproles. I mean, when you see what he did with the 89-yard point return, mm -hmm. with the one-yard run, where, I mean, it, he was absolutely sensational yesterday. There's no question. And he came into the game, by the way. For as the Eagles leading Russia, he had 46 yards rushing on the season in his first two games. And then he was actually their leading Russia because we all know that DeMarco Murray had 11 yards and 21 carries mm -hmm. and, and Ryan Matthews.